Hello everyone. Before we jump into our next story, I want to touch on something very important to me. I want my favorite people, the Nerd Alert audience, to be ahead of cyber attacks and computer hijacking. Start protecting yourself on the web at nordvpn.com slash nerdalert or enter the code nerdalert to save 77%. I talk about this a lot, but it's important, so I'm going to say it again. Your data is a vital commodity that hackers, greedy corporations, and even Russian malware creators are trying to take over every day. The FBI just put out a warning about a sophisticated malware system linked to Russia that may have infected at least half a million home and office routers in over 54 countries. And the New York Times is reporting that malware could be blocking web traffic, collecting any personal information entered on connected devices, and disabling devices entirely. You can stop the data manipulation yourself by restarting your router, going into the admin settings, and connecting NordVPN. There's a lot of reasons why I prefer NordVPN. First, it has an incredibly easy interface that I think anyone could easily use. Even my parents and Luddite sister can do it. Even Jank can do it. Secondly, and this is important, Nord doesn't slow down streaming video. So if you're on Twitch, you're going to have your location data protected from swatters. We just saw in the news a Call of Duty streamer was killed as the result of a swatter making a fake call to police. This doesn't have to happen. Nord is the fastest VPN product you can find. It won't throttle you like a direct Tor connection, and they've quadrupled their amount of servers to keep you safe without interrupting the rest of your life. I use it, I really like it, and now I can help you get it for 77% off just by using the code NERDALERT at nordvpn.com slash Nerd Alert. That's an incredibly low price. You can protect yourself each month for less than the price of bacon flavored dental floss. Except the VPN service is, you know, a lot more useful. When you travel, you really look out for one thing when you're on the plane. Try not to get sick because it's just a tube full of germs, right? Just a big Petri dish. But what we think about planes and germs might not necessarily be the biggest fear we need to have. <laughs> yeah, so there's a new study that came out and it's by Georgia Tech and Emory University. And it, I think academia is now trying to combat this weird propaganda that you know airplanes are disease incubators, you know, and that we have to be really wary of the people that are on board the planes with us. And um, this study tries to combat that. Now, I will say the study is funded by Boeing. So that's mm, important to know. That is, isn't Where's, it? How studies are funded is very important. Yes, and I, I went into the paper, and eventually, you know, the names came up, and uh, I think it was like Sharon. I can't remember her name, but it was, um, you know, she's an employee of the Boeing company, and it's largely funded by Boeing. So I don't know how much my skepticism, you know, starts like, you know, taking note. But at the same time, assuming that, of course, all the science is legit and unbiased and As long as you fair. can replicate it. Yes, you know, it does tackle a lot of very important issues. Mm -hmm. So we have things in the, um, in the paper, not only concerning, say, commercial cleaning and things like that, uh, you know, that are, are financially important for these companies and mm -hmm. for the transport uh, community as a whole, but also it talks about airborne diseases and infectious diseases and how they transmit. And uh -huh. apparently, Influenza or any kind of airborne disease can not be transmitted more than two seats horizontally across from you. That's good to know. And one <laughs> front and back. So if you are just the row the right people. behind or the row right in, right in front of a, somebody who is sick, you may get sick. Other than that, you don't have to worry. So this study, which by the way was funded by Boeing, uh, may concluded that yes, airplanes are germy, but not more so than maybe your office, mm -hmm. maybe your home, which are places where we would feel probably more comfortable, uh, let our guards down a little bit. Maybe if we dropped food on the table, we might still eat it, mm -hmm. uh, according to them. Uh, there was another study from insurancequotes.com that did swab tests on the surfaces of uh, different airports and airlines and calculated the fungal count cells and uh, colony forming units. Mm -hmm. And then what they found was that the highest germ counts in terminals were found on the screens of airport kiosks at 253,857 CFUs, followed by bench armrests and drinking fountain buttons. And they did this same test on the plane 
They found the dirtiest place, the places with the highest germ counts, were on the flush buttons of the toilets, which is not surprising, yeah. and followed by uh, the tray tables, the seat, and then the seat buckles. Fair that enough. That makes sense. Yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. But we're also, again, we're talking about the, you know, microbiomes of, of which are environmental sets of bacteria and germ, germs as we define them are viruses and bacteria and protozoa. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's a mix of a bunch of things, but we're talking about microbial cells. And if you look at just the human body. It is estimated that there are 10 times more <laughs> microbial cells than human cells. I love talking about this because I love finding out that we're just disgusting germ bad cells <laughs> <laughs> in these studies, which is, we think of ourselves as being maybe more pristine, you know, we take care of ourselves, we have good hygiene, but you know what? It just keeps coming back. The snot, mm -hmm. the saliva, other stuff I don't want to mention. <laughs> but I mean, <sighs> I've certainly watched myself more on planes. Yeah. I, I've heard anecdotally stories, like horror stories. There's this one comedian named Nicole Byer who famously found a piece of poop in a Delta blanket. Oh, gosh. Which I think kind of sticks to the idea that, yeah, planes are gross. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the, ooh, ooh, I just that's don't want to imagine a, that's it a as a traveler, it's hard. She but posted a picture, just don't don't look at it, Christina. Oh God, I won't, I won't <laughs> go down that Google rabbit hole just searching for stuff. Uh, but it's, you know, anecdotal instances like this. There's also a person who traveled, you know, with Ebola and did not, you know, nobody else got sick on the plane on the, you know, and it was a transatlantic flight. Mm -hmm. So there's like all these instances of, you know, why we should turn on the vents and, you know, use hand and sanitizer. And sit in the window seat or don't exactly. sit in the window seat. But yeah. I, I would want to keep in mind what you said about which way the germs may be communicable yes. um, and what kinds of germs we're looking at.